Good afternoon and welcome to Red Cloud's 2021 Oktoberfest Fall Mining Showcase. My name is Alina Islam and I'm a research associate here at Red Cloud Securities. Next, we are pleased to host Azincourt Energy and have with us Alex Klenman, President, CEO and Director, and Trevor Perkins, VP Exploration. Alex and Trevor, you will have 10 to 12 minutes for your presentation and then a few minutes at the end for a Q&A session. Attendees, please feel free to ask your questions using the Q&A link. Gen gentlemen, I'll now turn it over to you to start the presentation. Thank you so much for the introduction and welcome to uh, our viewers. Um, because it's pretty brief today, we're going to um, skip over some details in our presentation deck uh, and focus on um, the East Preston Uranium Project, which is our, our flagship property. Um, for anybody not um, um, familiar with us, we're a uranium exploration and development company. Uh, we've been around um, since about 2014. So we're, um, we're, we've been in the space for some time and have sort of earned our stripes along the way. Um, just to go through the deck here, obviously we have a disclaimer. Um, we'll bore you with the details. Many of you have read them before. Um, and, and I'm assuming because you're here, uh, you are aware of the supply demand fundamentals facing the uranium space. So we're not gonna spend too much time on that. Uh, today on this on this presentation, you have myself. I'm the president, CEO, and director. I've been involved with uh, Azincourt since the summer of 2017, and uh, Trevor Perkins, our VP Exploration, who's been involved since last year. Uh, we have a very strong board with two uh, top-tier geologists, and Ted and Paul, and, and our CFO Vivian does a great job. Um, again, the industry overview. You all know what's happening in this space, and you've seen spot rise as a result. Um, it's been a while for us. It's been a long bear market, and we're happy to see a spot come to life and the sector come to life. It's, it, it's um, been a long time coming. Um, as mentioned, we have uh, a primary project, the East Preston Project, which is a joint venture between ourselves and Sky Harbor Resources, as well as Dixie Gold. At this point, Dixie Gold is not participating in the, in the joint venture. We've picked up a few percentage points on the earn-in or on the JV because of that. Um, to date, uh, we've spent a little over three, four million now on, on the project since 2017. It's 25,000 hectares in the Western Athabasca. We have a huge inventory of targets to drill and uh, we're in a great uh, neighborhood. There's billions in market cap literally surrounding us. We also have a small um, project package in Peru, which I won't spend much time on today, but it's very prospective for both uh, lithium and uranium. Um, as mentioned, we're in the Western Athabasca. There's a reason for that. Obviously, the uranium um, development in, in the Athabasca is widely known, and it's been going on for 40 plus years. Uh, it's a good place to operate. The Saskatchewan government, and First Nations, and, and Saskatchewan are all favorable. And uh, obviously, some of the highest grade, largest uranium deposits in the world are found here. We're in the Western Edge for a reason. Um, the Western Edge gives us uh, shallower targets. There isn't the overburden uh, sandstone and things you find in the basin itself. So we've got shallow drill targets and uh, that's uh, that's good for a small cap like, uh, like uh, Azincourt. Um, that's a quick look at our neighborhood. As I mentioned, we're here. Um, Arano and Sky Harbor have, have the package next to us. Next Gen is above us. Those are both billion dollar market caps. As you see this was uh, as of October 7th. Uh, there's a lot to like in the neighborhood and uh, we're down here with uh, we're actually creeping towards 40 million on the market cap now but it's quite a small market cap compared to our peers in the area. Um, East Preston has had a fair amount of work done on the last in the last five years. Uh, we'll get to some of that in, in Trevor's part of the presentation which we'll pop into now. So Trevor go ahead and get people up to speed on, on the targeting, why we like it and why we're so uh, enthused with East Preston. Thank you, Alex. So, um, yes, yeah, so as Alex mentioned, we've been involved in the East Preston project since uh, 2017, uh, when we auctioned the property uh, from Sky Harbor and Dixie Gold. Uh, so in that time, we started out, we've run uh, airborne EM surveys over the entire property, which highlighted uh, two main corridors through the center of the property shown here as A and B, uh, B and C corridors. 
Now, uh, we look for conductive corridors because, of course, uh, uranium deposits, especially in the Athabasca, seem to be closely associated with conductive packages within the basement rocks. Now, where we are located, we're outside of the Athabasca Basin margin, so we're only looking at the basement rocks. We're not seeing any sandstone cover that we have to drill through or try and look through. Uh, which changes our, our survey usage a little bit. Uh, certain surveys work better in the sandstone, so we don't use them here. So we mainly focus on airborne EM, ground EM, and gravity surveys. So we want to go to the next slide, Alex. So looking at the areas that the airborne surveys highlighted, our uh, what we call our AG trend, which was A on the previous map, and our uh, uh, K through Q trend, which is uh, what was B on the previous map. We, you can see that we once we identified these corridors, we then ran, ran ground EM surveys over these corridors to identify where exactly within that conductive package the actual conductor itself was located to help us with targeting. Because uh, the airborne surveys highlight a fairly wide trend and we need to narrow that down. We then also ran gravity surveys over the same uh, ground-based grids. Uh, next slide, please, Alex. And uh, the gravity survey highlighted gravity loads associated with these conductors. Now, the conductors that were identified in the ground survey are the squiggly lines on this map with the colors in the background representing the gravity with the darker colors being gravity lows. Now, gravity lows typically indicate where we're seeing structure. So, of course, what we want to see is conductive package with closely associated structure, and then we look for bends in those conductors. And then as you can see from this map, many targets on the property to be uh, explored, and we're just starting to scratch the surface now. So you can go to the next slide, Alex. So most of the drilling to date, which has been 17 holes for just under 4,200 meters, have focused on the northern portion of our AG trend. So what's shown on this map is our A, A, B zone, and then the very top of the G zone. Now, you can see uh, highlighted red lines on this map. Those are the conductors identified in the ground survey uh, associated with this uh, ground uh, conductive corridor. And uh, as I said, the gravity would highlight where we're seeing structure associated with that. Also, what we I use to identify structure is we can see bends and breaks in those conductor lines. We like to focus in on those bends and breaks because that's where you've got potential east-west or northwest trending cross structures coming through, which can give better ground preparation and, and help us say, hey, this is where we want to be. This is where we've got good broken up ground where the fluids can sit and drop uranium out. That being said, in the holes we've drilled so far, we have identified elevated uh, base metal pathfinders that we typically use to vector in on uranium, which is nickel, cobalt, copper, zinc, um, arsenic. And they're showing us that uh, we've, got, uh, we've got the right fluids in the area. Now we just have to find where those fluids have had a really good chance to pool and drop out decent amounts of uranium. So as the drilling has identified, we've got the right lithologies. We've got the structure that we were thought we had. We've got alteration. We're seeing elevated base metals. Uh, next slide, Alex. So focusing in on the program we just ran this winter, in the uh, we drilled five holes. The southern three holes on these map, this map actually showed us we're also starting to see elevated uranium in the area. And when I'm saying elevated, I'm saying you know, two and three times what we would normally see as our background values, showing us that we're on the right track. We're starting to see numbers trending in the right direction. So in the winter, five of the 17 holes were completed uh, for 1,200 meters. Uh, we're seeing increased structural complexity, showing us we're getting close to our cross faults because we're targeting these bends and breaks in the conductor. So next slide, Alex. So in the summer, we ran an airborne radiometric survey over the southern portion of the property where we didn't previously have coverage because we wanted another tool in our toolbox to say, hey, we're focusing in on the right areas. And as you can see from this map, uh, the darker colored areas are where we, uh, the brighter colored areas, I mean, 
where we ran the survey this year, and you can see the northern half of the property was covered in previous survey. But the red and the purples are showing us where we're seeing radiometric anomalies. And they are again highlighting the uh, KHQ zones, the southern end of the Q zone in particular, and of course the southern end of the G zone, which is going to be our first, first focus for upcoming programs. Now we went out in the in August and we uh, spent some time ground truthing some of these anomalies, looking for radioactive boulder trains and such. What we're seeing is still telling us we want to be in these areas. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's a good area to be. Next slide, please, Alex. So now what our current planning is, uh, we're looking up to make up some of the meters we didn't drill in the winter because we had to uh, cut our program short due to uh, warmer than expected spring. Um, so we're looking at a, a winter program, six to 7,000 meters of drilling in 30 to 35 holes, mainly focusing on continuing our drilling on the G zone to test our targets uh, that we have generated there uh, with some fine tuning based on the, the recent radiometric survey. And then we'll move on to the H and Q zones. This, this work is expected to start in uh, early December, early to mid-December with road construction and camp building with the plan to have two drill rigs in the field in January, uh, starting up in early to mid-January with by mid-January, we're hoping to have both drill rigs up and running. This program is expected to last two to two and a half months maybe as much as three, depending on how weather cooperates with an expected budget in the $2.3 million range. Uh, and I think that's the last slide yeah, for you. Excellent. Alex. Yeah, thank you, Trevor. Um, I should mention at this point, we're well capitalized to uh, uh, execute the drill program. Uh, we're ready to go. We have permits, we have, uh, uh, we've been in consultation with First Nations. So we really don't see any roadblocks here. Um, we just need uh, the, uh, the weather cycles to do their thing, get real cold, give us the trees we need to get the roads done and, and get in and start drilling. So that's our plan. Um, I think we're kind of out of time. I won't speak to uh, Peru. I will mention anybody watching is, is free to give us uh, an email or a call. And uh, if anything, if there's any uh, queries about what we're doing in Peru and how those projects play out, we like them a lot. Uh, we're just out of time here. Um, so go ahead. If you have some questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Thanks, Alex and Trevor. Uh, that was a great presentation. Uh, we do have time for a few questions. So mm -hmm. first up, um, can you quickly highlight what sort of news flows investors can expect, let's say, over the next six to 12 months? Yes, absolutely. Well, what we can expect and what we want may be two different things. but. Let's, let's talk about uh, expectations. So obviously, um, listen, we've, as Trevor mentioned, we've, we've drilled 17 holes in the last four years. Um, we're going to exceed that. We're gonna double that uh, in this winter program alone. So there'll be a lot of excitement, a lot of buzz regarding um, the size and scope of the upcoming drill program. Uh, keeping in mind, we're really only targeting a couple of areas. We have multiple areas to target over time and we'll capitalize to do so. So the first step here is to go to the zones that we've been touching and, and that we have good data on, and, and those are our priorities at the moment. We certainly have enough drilling uh, drill targets ahead of us. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be going well into the future. Um, so the drilling uh, and a lot of marketing around that drilling, obviously, look, we have been through a long bear market. We have life in the sector. There's, there's institutional money flowing into the sector. Uh, there's investor interest across the board, uh, and we're about to embark on our biggest drill program to date. Um, and with the potential of delivering discovery uh, into a really good market. I mean, that's our goal. Uh, expectations are that we drill, we continue to get good data, and we end up in a situation where we're, we're getting closer to that, that, that uh, game-changing moment, which for us would be a, a confirmation of, of uranium mineralization in, at East Preston. Okay, that's great. Um, looks like there's lots to look forward to. Um, with that, I think we'll end it there. Thanks again, okay. Alex and Trevor, for a great presentation and everyone else for joining us. Uh, just a reminder, up next, we have Next Gen Energy.